Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. Today, we're going to be covering everything you need to know about Chell, particularly regarding the Final Fantasy IV event as well, since she will be important to that. Also, if you aren't doing anything later tonight, feel free to stop by the stream. We will be streaming between 8 p.m. Pacific Time and 12 a.m. Pacific Time for Reset Polls. <laughs> So you did vote in the YouTube message that I sent out and you all wanted to get the review for Mario instead of, or sorry, for Chell instead of Mario. So here we are with everything you need to know about Chell and probably the most important thing to know about her is that she's a Final Fantasy IV, right? She's a Final Fantasy IV bonus unit for the Trials of Reckoning. So if you are going to be using a Steel Time strategy at all, which most of you should be, She's going to be an easy way to get bonus points if you pull her and level her. I know for me, that's an event I'm going to go really hard on. And so I'm going to be pulling her tonight, hopefully. And hopefully I'll be able to max her out before the end of November when supposedly the Final Fantasy IV event is coming out. She is an MR unit and her primary job is Green Mage, Time Mage, and Thief. Weapons are going to be Rod and armors are going to be Hat, Cloth, and Accessory. Her TMR is actually a really good TMR as well. It's called the Ink Stick. It's gonna be a rod with HP 102, Magic 108, Accuracy 10. What's really great about it though is it gives Magic Attack 10 and Spirit Penetration 15 for self. I actually would almost make the claim that this is probably the strongest rod you could put on a casting character besides the Platinum Rod plus five. It's definitely going to be something nice to have in your arsenal for whenever you're running like dual casters or even triple casters and you just don't have enough platinum rods plus five for all of your different characters. Her mastery ability is going to increase agility 10% for self and decrease her activation time 250 for self. Overall, that is amazing. She's going to be very fast and she's one of the few units that get a mastery ability which adds agility. Her elemental resistance, she's weak to fire, strong to wind, and she's pretty much weak to everything 10% except magic, which she has 5% resistance to. Her stats are pretty bad because she is an MR green mage, right? So the only real relevant ones here are gonna be magic at 175. She is actually the 27th highest magic user in the game. And she also gets an additional 74 magic, which is very powerful, right? That's gonna put her at about 250, so she will be able to deal some damage. Her agility here is 53, but you also have to consider she gets agility plus eight from her board, right? So that's gonna put her at 61, plus she gets an additional 10%, which will be about plus five here. So she's almost gonna have about 66 agility, which is really fast, right? So overall, she's gonna be a very fast, very good steel time character even though she's just an mr mage keep in mind she'll also have access to thief passives which will also increase her agility as well in terms of her passives here you do have debuff resistance magic resistance you have ct change invalid emerald echo you have the thief knowledge which is going to be the most important one which is going to give you a move one and agility 12 percent that's going to be you know another five six agility that you can throw onto her high speed chanting will decrease activation time 250 for self on top of her mastery ability which will make all of her spells cast twice as fast and you do have acquired ap up level one but honestly you're probably just going to be setting thief's knowledge and high speed chanting it's honestly going to be the way to go unless you're auto AIing, in which case you may put CT change invalid so that she doesn't haste herself. In terms of counters, I would put slow counter just because as most of you know, I am a huge fan of slow counter. It does have an enhanced chance to land slow and it is one of the highest proccing percentage counters that you can use. You could potentially do quick action. However, I think if she's going to be getting hit by an ability, she is most likely dead because she only has that little bit of HP at around 1200. From her main kit, you do have access to Ruin, and I would just leave Ruin on. If you are going to be auto AIing though, I would turn everything else off here. Uh, you do have Imperil, which is going to decrease all elemental resistance 25% for three turns to target. This could actually be really good if you are 
gonna be running some type of chain group, right? So instead of steel timing on the first turn, maybe she pops it in peril. Something to think about. I think that could actually be uh, very viable. And uh, that's definitely gonna be more of a manual thing. In terms of her sub abilities, she does have increases agility 25% for three turns to target. Again, you're probably not gonna be running her sub green mage. She does have deprotect protect de shell. Really though, where it's gonna be at is you're gonna wanna run her sub time mage or potentially sub thief as well. If you're going sub time mage, the two big abilities that you're looking for are haste and quicken. And being able to haste and quicken is just always a good thing. I think if you're putting her on auto AI, so like if you're out there just auto farming, you turn everything else except haste, quicken, and ruin. You could leave Comet on, but honestly, Ruin is literally the exact same thing as Comet. Uh, if we go back here, you can actually see it's literally the same modifier. It's literally the same AP and is literally, I actually think Ruin has longer range than Comet does, it looks like. So honestly, just turn off Comet and you got a little, we got Buzo back here playing with his toy in case you hear any crinklies in the background right now. Uh, you could leave slow on, but honestly, I don't think you're going to cast any of these abilities. If you're just auto AIing, it's just going to take up time. I think you're just going to leave haste and quick, and she's going to be a very manual heavy unit. I think sub thief is going to be probably her most relevant. I put leave confusion dagger on, but honestly, I would probably turn it off because she's not going to have very much attack or slashing modification. Uh, steel, um, steel accuracy here could actually be really viable uh, when you're doing uh, any type of trial or chaining. So you could actually potentially leave this here and leave it on. Uh, increased evasion rate 42 for three turns to self. You can just leave that as well. Steel time, probably the most important ability, right? And we also have steel heart. So overall, she's really going to be a support unit that is focused on helping you in the upcoming Final Fantasy IV event. She's a bonus unit. She's gonna give you those bonus percentages. Her TMR is reasonably good. I would say a lot of you are probably not investing in MR units right now because you're waiting until the MR investment material updates come out. I think Shell is one of those exceptions where she's going to be so useful, particularly if you are running an ice team when you're going up against the Trials of Reckoning for Final Fantasy IV, I think she's one that you do actually invest in with your Rainbow Fragments. And I know that might be a little controversial to say. However, you never know if, you know, having these bonus percentages from the characters for the Final Fantasy IV Trials of Reckoning event will kind of make or break whether or not you're able to max out the Wind Lance or whether you're able to pursue Kane or Rosa to their fullest. In terms of gear, I do think the healing staff plus five would be really good on her. She has very high magic, and so you can benefit from having her cast Kira. Anything else is gonna be really good. You could do the magic baton TMR for casting time reduction. Nothing's really gonna beat her ink stick though, if you're going for DPS. In terms of espers, any magical esper will be fine. You can also throw cactar on this list. You can throw, you know, so many different espers here, any type of magical. Uh, for vision cards, you would probably wanna go Rama or Trousseau would be my number two favorites. If you have Mobius, you could go Mobius. Otherwise, I think you're gonna go survivability or agility. Secret orders is not for the slash attack bonus, but for the agility up on the individual unit. Make her go a little bit faster and make her potentially pull steal time you know, just that much faster. Another card you could put on here, which I personally don't have, is the Final Fantasy Tactics Agility Up card. Anything to make her go faster, to make Steel Time more effective, is probably going to be the way to go with her. And I know that you probably have many Steel Time units, but remember, what we really care about here is that she is a bonus unit for Final Fantasy IV, and she has access to Haste and Quicken to support you and her TMR is reasonably good. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Do remember, we are gonna be streaming tonight from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. Pacific time. I hope to see some of you guys there. And if you are planning on buying Vizior, please use my affiliate link, dig.gs slash coins. You can also use my special offer link, dig.gs slash offer if you're looking to get a little bit of a discount. And finally, make sure you come to our Discord and check us out. Thank you so much everyone and have a great rest of your day.